let's go ahead and pull this thing it's gonna make a big sprawling when i release it so and here we go sprawling <laughs> Hello and welcome to the 33rd episode of the Chandler Build Series. We're going to be doing the front firewall area all the way from the very floor to the very top, both on the Rambler body and the Cherokee inner area. A lot of complex curves. I had to make it in a couple pieces, but without further ado, let's get to it. Thanks for watching. I've got the firewall down to here. Now I need to bring it down and over. This is where it's going to get hopefully easier, but also interesting because there's going to be curves and I've got to figure out what is this stock crap from the Cherokee I'm going to cut out and some of it's just going to be exploratory because there is rust so I'm going to just start cutting some things so I'm going to hit a few things with a hammer and kind of see what will move and where to move because I want this edge to meet here I want to get as much and gain as much area for the wheel coming up and in as possible this is still 4x4 four four and it would be nice to fit the biggest tire I can with the smallest amount of lift which is also cost effective that's right, go. Diesel. That's 2500 gram manual trans, which is cool. Truck's not great shape, but yeah, I like the manual. There'll be more manual content coming. There's something out of view that um, I can't show you yet because I haven't figured out exactly what I'm gonna do with it, but I have a feeling that uh, most of you have never seen the platform it is and none of you have seen what shape it's in so it'll be very cool it was a something from the 70s we'll go with that because it is and it was a one point an extremely customized car that point is long gone um, but it's going to be one again so there's a lot of stuff coming with that and i've got a ton of other cars so those things are going to come up as well which is going to be fun but that's got to wait until I figure out what I'm doing with it. And hopefully this being done will help me pay for that one. We'll see how it goes. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get the first chunk out of here. So this little bugger, which is actually where the electrical pass through the firewall. I'll have to remake something in that basic area. But I need this out as sort of an exploratory cut. That's up close and personal. It's like I'm Dan trying to read comments on a live stream. I'm likely going to cut this upper lip here pull this out i know i'm losing some of the strength but i'll build some of it back in the other side is 10 times worse so i'm gonna try to match that side because there's more space and the less i have to try to form the better this might actually end up being three to four pieces uh plug welded together give me some strength because the 18 isn't bad but it's not super strong so basically i'm gonna have some pieces going about like this they'll be a little different just because of the shape but so it's gonna go all the way down to the lower part where the floor meets. I hate to do it, but this whole panel's got to come out of here. I'll say it again, so much more room for activities. I'm likely going to leave this reinforced piece right here and then come back through here and trim up so that it meets this edge. I might reshape it some because I need this piece and this piece, which you can't see. I need the shock tower on the Rambler body to meet the shock and coil spring bucket tower on the Cherokee frame. So, or chassis, I guess I should say. So I'm gonna have to fix and mess with this and get it as best I can, seamless. I'm yabbering on. I'll keep bringing in as I get places and do things and slicey slicey. Figured it was a good time to go ahead and sit the brake pedal assembly in and make sure that it fits with my concept of what I'm going to do. You might notice this is a, uh, you know, three pedal setup. It's not going in here now. It's going to have to just be the regular brakes and regular transmission. But if I have my druthers, eventually in one of the next versions of this vehicle, it's going to have five speeds and one of those little stick shifty things and three pedals. But I wanted to make sure that I've got room, so. And I should. Assuming I don't want to, you know, put the clutch to the floor. Because that's where the Cherokee floor would be. So, keep moving. I did some more CAD work, and I think I've got this bottom piece sized and shaped correctly. So I'm going to transfer that to some steel. 
There's a spot weld and some other stuff I've got to cut in here because I want to slide this in between the Cherokee steel and the chassis like I did for some of the rear parts. So I'll do that and bring it back when I'm putting this bad boy together. I'm glad I drilled that spot weld out. It's going to give me a chance to clean all that crap up, hit a little weld through primer, and uh, get the new panel in once I cut it and, you know, form it. I got a little carried away and uh, cleaned up all the paint and all the surfaces and got all the rust off. So I'm going to hit everything with a coat of rust through primer. Or, <laughs> I hope it's not rust through primer, it was weld through primer. And I will get to cutting that material. I have this nice formed piece and I'm going to put it in there and burn it in. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with this yet. I'm going to have to wait until I see and maybe I have to form it to this upper piece so this little edge is going to stay off. I'm going to go inside and weld one or two things first, then I'm going to come out here and zip all the stuff in. As soon as this firewall is done, I have a massive amount of stuff to clean up to get myself back in some sort of shape because this thing is just as functional as hell right now. and uh, get the bottom secured. Well, I guess we're going to see if I've gotten any better at welding upside down. I'm voting 30% on a graded scale, but we'll see. Oh, that's much better. Much, much, much better. Mm. That hurt. This is going to be the strongest Rambler and the strongest Cherokee that's ever existed, at least in certain spots. I ended up doing some more CAD. I went ahead and transferred this piece onto some steel. So I'm going to go ahead and try to form this little bugger. I'm going to form this little bugger, but I'm going to try to form it to what I need it to be. You know, fun stuff. Well, I got all the ground up cleaned off. Now I'm going to go bend these two lines and start to form it. It needs to gently bend in two spots like that. I'm going to have to keep putting it in the bender and gently bring this curve around more. I had to bend this upper piece a little bit I'm probably gonna have to flatten it back out but I'm gonna get this closer first I'll worry about the bottom once I have this kind of where I need to be now I've got the spindle where I want it to be I'll fiddle with this a bit probably bend it out too much so I can get it in a position then I can bend it back and then I'll flatten this out a bit as well it took a while but I've got everything in place I'm gonna pull it all off line up the marks put some through holes for plug welds and get this bad boy prepped and in here so, let's go ahead and pull this thing. It's going to make a big sprawling when I release it, so and here we go. Sprawling. There's actually a lot of shape in this thing. I know it probably doesn't look like it because it's sort of just kind of lame looking, but uh, I'm actually happy this came together with one piece. I'm still likely going to have to make one piece here, one piece here, and then something for the top, but this it is a huge win. The 3M can of zinc weld through primer kind of had a little hissy fit. So I'm going to let that dry and hit it with, I finally got another can of the revives and get caught on there and then I will get to welding it. God, that thing was fun. Now my, my fingertips are also covered in zinc even through the gloves. So yeehaw. Let's go ahead and put this bad boy in there. Everything needs adjustments. I'm going to systematically go through it and weld and adjust the clamps as I need to because this is close, but it's not quite perfect. So, stitchy, stitchy, tacky, tacky, movie, movie, cussy, cussy. We'll see how it goes.
gonna start working my way down now. And once I've got the bottom together, I will go up to the top again. She is all welded in. I'll take you out in the front and show you that side of it as well. I'll show you what I'm gonna have to do now that I've got it in place. So the big goal for this was to give me more tire clearance, which I made myself less tire clearance because I went to bend this at an angle. So I, when I bent this center a little bit further, I tried to bend it and tweak it. I bent it the wrong way. What I'm gonna have to do is gently pound this up and over a little bit, which I was gonna have to do anyway. I'm gonna have to try to fold this edge over so that it gives me a smoother transition here and gives me more tire clearance. Stuff I can address, but the biggest thing is this is in and strong and it'll be a good point to start with for the rest of it. As I bend this, I might have to cut it and relieve it and put it back together and weld it, but I'm gonna start moving it and we'll see what it goes because I don't have the right equipment to really shrink and stretch, but I'll do the best I can. <laughs> I should have done a little more, you know, but I'm trying so hard to get this done. You make mistakes when you're speeding through things, and this was a mistake. Thankfully, it's correctable. Still a mistake. It'd be great if I could take this tire off, because I actually have area to swing in, but I really kind of can't. <laughs> far from perfect but it's a lot better at this curve is back to being a curve a little couple dents in here i'm probably never going to get out with the space i have and the tooling i have but this is a nice curve comes down in here to a nice curve i'm going to go ahead and start doing cat again this is likely going to have to be at least three pieces one for here here and here it all depends on how complex the shapes are I started to shape this panel and even with getting it as tight into here as I can and tweaking it a bunch out here, I'm never going to have it meet here. So I'm going to have to slice this in a couple spots, form it over, fold it, and tag it all back together. I'm going to tweak this a little more and see what else I can do before I start trying to slice this up and form it. Worst case, I'll cut a hunk out of it, form it up, put a patch panel on it. As long as it's strong as all that matters at this point, I've got to make up time, so... Perfection is going to have to take a back seat. And it was only mild perfection at best. I went ahead and made a cut on that line. I'll start to fold it and see where we get to. Hopefully this isn't the biggest mistake I've ever made. On this, well, on this car anyway. Probably going to sound a little silly, but I'm going to straighten this out first. I'll work whatever kinks I have to out. I'm just trying to get as much fold from back here where the start is. What I should do is actually drill a hole where the forming, where the two pieces are so they don't split. I'm not sure this is gonna be the full length yet, so I'm gonna wait. Yeah, this isn't awkward at all. Go ahead and side and put a small eighth inch hole where the saw cut ends to help me form it and hopefully not kink it and tear it. Because I can get a little more bend out of this and I can shape it a little bit better because it's going to require a lot of movement. I've gotten this lower section to shape much better. I've had to adjust things, tweak things, and I'm going to be doing something in a minute that I'm probably going to deeply regret, but it's likely going to have to be done. So we're going to take the BFH and uh, deform all of this in the corner here. Oh well, yeah, that deformed the crap out of that. That's about as far as I can move without really starting to screw up any future plans I have in here. I got a big freaking crease right in here that I've got to figure out what I'm going to do with. Yeah, I just made myself a lot of extra work, which was the whole point of me doing this was to cut out extra work, but 
Damn if I do, damn if I don't. This is what happens when you hurry. Now, I only spent like two or three times the amount of time I wanted to spend as opposed to five or six or ten, which is what was going to happen before. So I'm still ahead. I'm just massively behind. On today's episode of Continuing to Make Bad Decisions, I went ahead and made another slice cut in here. I'm going to pound this flat, and I should be able to then pound this over and pound this over. We'll see what happens. It was simple. Everybody would do it. find when you're trying to bend things that sometimes you have to bend other pieces out of the way to get you the space you need to bend the first thing in and then you can adjust and yeah that's uh gonna work what i'll do is i'll get these two surfaces together and then i will tack them together and i'll start trying to mold this upper piece so i'm gonna have to trim it and do some things. Now I get the first piece welded together. I'm running out of welding gas, so we'll see how this goes. I'm at least going to get the next piece fit. We'll go with that. We'll go with fit. It's starting to get there. It's a slow process. Now I got to start forming the upper part, but this is, you know, almost one, you know, I can actually see this coming together, which is awesome. Now to misshape and misform everything else. <laughs> So I got full pedal travel, which you probably can't see much of, but I do. So lots of fitting later and it's 95% done. Got to do a little few things to it, drill a bunch of holes, clamp the ever living crap out of it and stitchy stitchy spit spit. This is kind of a perfect description of how my day's been going. Not bad, not great. Just broke my Dremel again. It didn't blow up the wheel, it just stuck the landing. Whew. Hey, it's still good. Screw's not, but it's still good. Get this bad boy in position and get it welded in. I got all excited last night, had a long day, and I left my biggest sheet of material out overnight and it rained. So after I cut this little piece for that last plate, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this sheet, I guess, or hell, I might just leave it alone, just clean it up as I use it. But yeah, that was a big old brain fart on my part. Well, let's get to cutting this out and I'll get that last piece in there. This is the cat I used to cut this piece of material. I'm gonna go ahead and mark some of the measurements on the inside, see where it lays out at, and then I can start doing some bends for this piece. I made this little template that basically follows the curvature of this bend. I'm gonna use this to mark out on this piece to hopefully follow the bends so I can hopefully bend it more smoothly in my press break. Still gonna have to be a little tweaky, but this should help a huge amount. Basically the bend is going to start in this area and it'll be the length of this piece. So it's going to go about to here and then it would have to fold back the other direction. But I'm trying to find out the best way to curve this. This upper area is going to have a much gentler bend if, if none at all if possible. So this is going to be very heavy at the bottom. So I need to make sure I put it in the press bake the direct, correct direction so I don't repeat what I did here so that I'm bending this heavy and this end light. I'm marking out little arrows to kind of help remind me where I'm trying to bend heavier this direction or if I need to say let's bend back this direction. I know that what I'm doing is bending it this way and then I might have to reverse the part in the break and bring it the other way. Just little guides to help you along. I'm going to mark lines straight up this on both sides because I'm likely going to have to flip the part like I said and then I will start tweaking it and I'll try to show you as I'm forming it. Well, let's see what I can do here. <laughs> Go 
check in. I'll be back. Needs more bending. This first side is pretty dang close. I'm going to flip it and start doing this side. It's definitely better to sneak up on it then overshoot it by a lot. But forming stuff without really any plans, which is sort of what I'm doing is you're kind of shooting at the dark. You're taking what you remember or what you know. The more you do this stuff, the better at it you'll be. And I am out of practice to be nice about it. Yeah, that fits. That's basically as dead on as I'm gonna get from here. I'm gonna have to bend this whole edge down to meet the other face. So I'll start doing that actually on a car. As I get a little closer, I'll bring it back to show it to you. Well, it's mostly formed. I traced inside of it to get an approximate of where it is. There's gonna be a lot of extra material to get rid of. I'll have to figure out what I'm doing with this upper edge, but I'll probably wait until later because I'm gonna have to put some kind of cap on this thing. I'm going to take this off, see where it's at, and then hopefully be able to trim it to a smaller size and maybe finally fit it. I want to try to put it inside, but I might have to put it outside. There's just so many complex and compound curves, I don't know what I'm going to be able to do with it. can't remember if I said this before, but I need at least one more of these giant buggers. I had this thing pretty well formed, and then I tried to bend it, and I slipped and basically kinked it, so I had to kind of start over again. Which actually was better because it also let me get some stress out by pounding it flat and reforming it. So the red marker line is the inside area. So I'm going to leave a solid half inch minimum around the bottom areas. Uh, trim it up and see how it fits. All the mounting holes are drilled out. Everything's cleaned up, welded, primered. I'm going to go ahead and mount this bad boy up and stick it in place with a welder. Because that doesn't sound complicated at all. I could have made that sound simpler, but you know, if I did, I don't have to use 57,000 words, but that's what I'm going with for this one. I don't want to say it again, but I already said it like six times, so. Weld. So this is actually complete up into the cap. I, uh, I'm extremely happy. This was a long, long, long time coming. Thank you very much for watching the 33rd episode of the Chandler build series. So I'll end up doing the top cap for the driver's side once I get more of the other componentry done and once I get the inner rocker structure started. The passenger side firewall we build video will be out next week along with a very special interview series I'm doing from Michigan Makes where I interview the president of the Michigan Motorsports Hall of Fame. That video will be out as well next week. I'll try to have some teasers out for that towards the end of this week. Uh, like, share, and subscribe. Let me know what you want to see, what you like, what you don't like, and I will see you next week. Thank you very much. Don't forget live streams every Wednesday, 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central, and 5 MST3K. Well, it's... <clears throat>